Hello everybody, it's me Scoop, and before this video starts, I just want to say really quickly, I write for my school newspaper, The Flame, and I also built their website, so, you know, go to www.goflame.com and check out the online exclusive section for some more reviews by me and my friend Josh, and also just, you know, any other news articles you want to check out over there. I already have a review on WandaVision. I talked about the MonsterVerse, which is like, you know, the Godzilla vs. Kong universe. And an alternate but shortened version of this review will be available up there for our next issue sometime in early June. So, anyway, enjoy. Alright, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Just finished airing on Disney Plus last night. I watched it, gathered my thoughts, wrote a review, and I was honestly pretty presently surprised. Now, I'm going to be pretty straight with you guys, I did not enjoy WandaVision very much. Every episode did end with like a pretty interesting cliffhanger that left me excited to see what was going to happen next week, but once the finale aired and I took a step back to look at everything, I realized it was kind of a mess. Most of the reveals kind of don't align with each other in any way, like Agatha all along. That might have been a cool scene, but it wasn't Agatha all along. I left more detailed thoughts on this in my WandaVision article that's on my school's webpage that I built for our school newspaper, www.goflame.com, so if you want to go read that, you can. But I wasn't really that excited for the Falcon and Winter Soldier, just because the duo, yeah, maybe they were fun in Civil War and I really enjoyed them there, but I didn't know if they could really lift an entire show on their own. But I was pretty pleasantly surprised. So anyway, with that intro out of the way. Uh, let's get into my more, you know, official review. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier continues a new MCU trend in the best way possible. Ever since the release of Avengers Endgame, MCU fans have been dealing with the loss of four major characters from the past ten years. Iron Man, Black Widow, The Vision, and of course, Captain America. The newest MCU trend has been exploring the grief of the characters closest to the ones who sacrificed themselves in the conclusion to the Infinity Saga. Immediately after Endgame, fans were shown their first taste of the MCU post-blip with the globe-trotting Spider-Man Far From Home. This film was all about Peter Parker, Iron Man's former protege, of course, dealing with the loss of the universe's greatest hero and stepping out of his shadow to allow Spider-Man to be his own hero and Peter to be his own man. This was recently followed by WandaVision, which was all about Wanda dealing with the loss of the Vision, who she of course stated in the years between Civil War and Infinity War. While WandaVision might have had some serious issues in terms of the superhero writing, most fans agreed that the dramatic scenes of grief and acceptance were where the show was at its best. Now, two heroes remain. Captain America and Black Widow. Black Widow has a prequel movie releasing at some point this year, but obviously it keeps getting delayed due to COVID-19. So while it might not follow our remaining Avengers getting some time to mourn her death, which was strangely glossed over during Avengers Endgame and only got those two really short scenes, it could definitely serve to finally give fans some closure on one of the original six heroes. Although I am expecting it to also leave some threads open to be explored in Hawkeye show whenever that's getting released. One character left, Captain America. This is where the Falcon and the Winter Soldier finally comes into play. Cap's previous two sidekicks, and like I said, probably one of the more interesting duos in the MCU, Falcon, who is of course Sam Wilson, and the Winter Soldier, who is also, of course, Bucky Barnes, team up to take down a group of terrorists determined to restore the world to how it was during the blip. Meanwhile, Falcon must deal with family issues brought on by the blip, and Bucky must finally move on from his murderous years operating as the Winter Soldier. One side of the plot is handled masterfully, and the other is left to rot. The character development our two title characters undergo throughout the season is engaging, emotional, and exactly what I was looking for in these Disney Plus originals. I felt like the MCU should leave the fate of the world hanging in the hands of the larger-than-life heroes on the big screen, while just giving us some time to catch up with the real people who make the MCU what it is on our TVs. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier walks a fine line in this regard, relegating full episodes to Sam and Bucky living or just adjusting to civilian life, but filling others with mindless action. I feel like this mindless action was just thrown in to make some MCU fans watch and say, Yay, fucking go. When they have little investment in the actual story. The very opening of the show is an action set piece of Falcon chasing a helicopter with literally no context, and it only serves to give an incredibly basic introduction to the idea of countries' borders shifting during the blip, which is the main issue brought up by the Flag Smashers. Honestly, it was boring, poorly choreographed, and made me slightly nervous for how the season of TV was going to play out. However, the episode did introduce another element of the plot I absolutely adored, real-world racial issues. I know that sounded a little sarcastic, mostly because the MCU's history with adding woke story elements into their movies has always been one of my most hated aspects, because it leaves no room for discussion, 
without someone finding themselves offended. Especially with Captain Marvel. Ugh. I was so pleasantly surprised with how the Falcon and the Winter Soldier handles race and integrates it into the plot, I could actually just discuss it for hours. That's the Black Falcon there, I tell you. Now, that's Captain America. But I'm just gonna keep a brief and, like, you know, mostly spoiler free. The best example is the conclusion to Isaiah Bradley's storyline. Isaiah Bradley is, of course, a new character introduced as an African American super soldier who existed during the 1900s. And that's all I'm going to give you on him, because his story is pretty interesting and I don't really want to spoil it. The concept of this character alone is such a genius way to integrate real-world issues into the MCU in a way that feels natural and real. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil how his story ends, but the final scene with him had me teary-eyed for the first time in MCU history. Outside of a certain star-spangled man kissing his love interest, but come on, that requires a heart of steel to make it through with dry eyes. The discussions between Isaiah and Sam are exactly what I wanted from Tafad Tawas. Dramatic scenes featuring talented actors that expand the universe in ways that keep it grounded. While I do feel Bucky Barnes was snubbed a little bit in terms of character arcs, the elements they introduced were interesting enough to keep me engaged. I think the show would have actually benefited from just introducing these ideas, but not exploring them too much in the first season, and then, you know, leaving that as the main plot thread for season two. Once again, to remain spoiler free, all I'll say is that in the finale, his character makes a choice to reveal a secret that I think would have been much more impactful if his story was more fleshed out. Speaking of season two, the show left an aggressive amount of plot threads open to continue, and most are not particularly interesting. They almost all revolve around the villains, who were honestly pretty boring outside of the one moment I will get to in a minute, showing off how they are still around and just getting stronger. There's even a twist villain that's just so boring and strange. I don't even have a single comment besides, but, but why did you make them a villain? And to be totally honest, the villains in the season were not great to say the least. The flag smasher motto, one world, one people. One world. One world. One people. One people. One people. Gives me the idea that they want one world government for all people to unite under. This obviously fits into the idea of them fighting the shifting borders as well. But we actually don't know what their plan is. It's never explained, and they are just stopped after trying to kill some senators who are undoing the border and government changes made during the blip, so we never find out. And besides that, Carly, the leader of the Flag Smashers, is made too relatable? Like, I get it. The villain needs to make sense, but we spend so much time trying to understand her that it makes the whole conflict seem kind of dumb. She contradicts herself through her actions, and this time would have been better spent on Bucky. We also have Baron Zemo, and it kinda sucks I made it this long without even needing to talk about him. This is mostly because the show manages to cram so much into less than six hours, it's kinda hard to keep track of everything. Anyway, he was fun while he was around. I liked his character, his actor gave a great performance, and we got some quality memes out of him. Alright, back to Carly. The only moment between Falcon and Carly that's very interesting is when Sam uses his military training to try to talk her out of becoming the next MCU's big bad. This is like a nice nugget of characterization for Falcon, as well as letting viewers understand Carly a little bit better. We understand her not because of her backstory, but because we actually get to see her personality shine through beyond government evil. Maybe you'll give me respect as a villain. A villain who is evil. And Mama Donya. However, there's one aspect that makes the scene so amazing I have not touched on yet. John Walker. Walker is declared the new Captain America by the US government, but we see that he is no Steve Rogers. Walker is nothing but obsessed with his title and making sure people know he is now the Star Spangled Man with a plan. Seeing a Captain America who isn't just, you know, evil or, of course, Steve Rogers, he's just selfish, is so exciting that even after finishing the show, it's hard to express how much I enjoyed it. While I do feel his character does not face the right consequences for his action, mostly in the finale, he was still fun to watch and I'm certainly enticed to tune in next season to see where he ends up. However, I do want to stay on John Walker for a second more. John Walker is meant to be all the things Captain America isn't. He doesn't fight because it's the right thing to do, he does it for greed and fame. When he takes the serum, we see him becoming more and more unstable, and naturally I thought this was escalating somewhere. You're probably thinking, Scoop, it did escalate, he did a murder on a smashy boy with the shield. And yeah, that scene was incredible but he kind of just gets discharged as Captain America. And when he yells at the court, the escalation continues to build, so I assumed he was going to kill Carly out of revenge and be the villain for the finale. 
serve as the final test to show how Falcon is the real Captain America. This wouldn't be perfect, mostly because the motivation wouldn't really be there, but just having him be forgiven and have everyone move on is pretty whack. Honestly. But another aspect of the show I absolutely adored was Sam Wilson as Captain America. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is my all-time favorite superhero movie, and my second all-time favorite movie, Behind the World's End. I love you so much, baby. That's because it really leans into the idea of who Spider-Man is and what makes a hero. And I really think a lot of these traits are shown in Steve Rogers over the course of the Infinity Saga. Obviously, it differs a little bit because Spider-Man and Cap are their own men, but their cores are actually really similar. They're both just average people who have a strong moral compass and rise to become some of the greatest heroes in the universe by always getting back up. Sam Wilson shares a lot of these qualities, and we really get to see them shine through during the season. I especially love the small details in the fight in the finale where he finally becomes Captain America, as he combines the shield with his classic moves to show, yeah, he's Cap now, but he doesn't forget where he started and he's still his own man. Like a shield bash with a little extra force using the Falcon jetpack, or a wing dome capped with the shield. All in all, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier does an excellent job of exploring the MCU post-endgame, and really digs deep into my favorite aspect of superhero stories, what it means to be a hero. While I think the story might have covered a little too much ground in the villain department mostly, and left Bucky very underutilized, it still delivered an emotional and compelling story. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier asked what it takes to be Captain America, and as far as I'm concerned, Sam Wilson is Captain America. So with all this said, I give Tifadwus a 7 out of 10. That's a low 7 out of 10. I just don't think it deserves a 6 or a 6.5 out of 10, okay? Anyway, um, I'm really tired. So, uh, keep it crispy.